Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger and my friends. Today we're talking about a very memorable fighting game. I guess you could put it that way, but memorable for a lot of the wrong reasons. So as far as fighting games go, there's actually a fair bit of licensed fighting games, fighting games that come from specific properties. Sometimes it's a bit silly, like Dungeons and Dragons, and sometimes it's a heavy hitter, like Star Wars. Star Wars, oh my god, Star Wars has so, so many great games. So many classics, so many underrated games too. And to be fair, also a couple stinkers. And that's sort of where we're at today with this video. This is Star Wars The Masters of Terras Kasi, the Star Wars fighting game. And as far as Star Wars games go, it's near the bottom of the barrel. And as far as fighting games go, it's also sort of near the bottom of the barrel. So let me talk to you about why this game kind of sucks, but also give you a little history lesson of what it was, just so you know. So one of the first things to talk about this game is it is a 3D fighter. Now, unlike a lot of other 3D fighters, you don't got too much in the way of freedom of movement. As yes, you can kind of traverse the stage, but this requires a trigger. So if you want to go into the camera, it's L1. If you want to go step out of the camera, it's L2. So no freeform movement, soul caliber, this is not for sure. And the other thing is, well, it's a, it's a particularly ugly game. I, let's just call it for what it is. So let me show you what the game really looks like. We're using a little bit of movie magic to upscale the resolution to make it look better. This is what the game looks like properly. And at the time too, and I know it was the mid nineties, you know, 3D was not quite where it needed to be just yet. But even at the time, it was not a particularly good looking game. So now as for the actual gameplay, it's a four button game. So you have horizontals with square. You have kind of verticals with your triangle, a different kind of horizontal with circle and for the most part, X is your kick button. Now here's the thing. So Vader is holding his lightsaber, right? Well, it's sort of a stance game in that certain characters, they have a weapon they can pull out. Not everyone can, we'll go over that in a little bit, but certain characters can pull out a weapon. Everyone starts, if they do have the option to switch over weapons, they start barehanded. And then all you gotta do is hit R2 and you pull out your weapon. Now the thing is for a lot of characters with their weapons, that's kind of all you really ever want to do. Like take Luke for an example here. Just like Vader, he can pull out the lightsaber or keep it away and he can attack without a lightsaber. But the thing is, as you would expect, everyone has, you know, moves, normal specials. There's those super bars below. So all sorts of mechanics stuff, right? Luke can literally only do stuff with his lightsaber out. If he does not have the lightsaber out, all he can do is the basic attacks. And that is it, that is all. There's literally nothing else he can do. So for Luke, there's really no real reason not to bust out the lightsaber. Because, you know, this is where you get your pokes, you get your, you know, launchers, like every move he has comes from this. Also, well, you can probably notice here, you get that super meter at the bottom, right? So this game has both a full super, if you fill that bar, and you just fill the bar by, you know, smacking the enemy, all that kind of stuff. And also has effectively what you would call EX moves. So for Luke, back, forward, and triangle is actually using one bar. And see here, it just kind of sent Boba Fett flying. And, well, the ring out. Yes, this game does have ring outs. And um, the game doesn't protect you from ring outs all too well either. Yeah, so I can use a bit of my bar to get basically a big knockdown. You can send him flying. And also just to let you know, that took a couple takes because the input buffer in this game is God awful. That is as simple as an input as it can get. It is back forward and triangle. And when you know it, the game buffer, she don't like that. It's not too complex. You know, I've been doing this fighting game thing for a while, right? And it took me that many tries to get it. It is very frustrating to get even basic things off in this game. Now here uh, we have Arden Lin, who is the titular master of Taras Kasi, by the way, and we'll get more into the nonsensical story in a little bit here. Uh, but a few things here, which did make me like the game back in the day. One, uh, she has Paul's death fist. 
Like, if you played any amount of attack and you know that move, right? And it's always satisfying to hit no matter what the game, especially when you can fling people out of the ring with it, right? Some other things. Uh, there is some more complex motions besides just, you know, back forward, all that kind of stuff. Like, there is charge motions. Arden Lin is a character that has a charged laser, and she is one of the characters that cannot switch weapons because as a master of Taras Kasi, her fists are a weapon, right? It's really dumb. But anyway, so yeah, there's charge moves. Uh, there's stuff like quarter circles like that. And of course, there's the big supers. And the big supers, they're pretty ridiculous. Uh, a lot of them, like if you're anywhere even remotely near the corner, it's a guaranteed ring out. They do a ridiculous amount of damage. They're just, they're basically round enders on the spot. Now, all that said, don't confuse this for a lot of nuance or anything, right? Because this game is stiff as all get out. It's hard to do the moves you want to do when you want to do them. It is just not a very free flowing game. Let's put it that way. And a lot of things on that uh, note, like say the basic throw, every fighting game needs a throw, right? Throw in this game is triangle and X. And there you go, we got a cool throw animation, right? Uh, now the thing about this game is there is absolutely no way to change your controls. So if you were playing this back in the day, right? You know, triangle and X are not, that is not a good button press to hit on a PlayStation controller. You gotta like kind of smash your thumb together and hope you hit it. And once again, cause the inputs are so strict in this game, if you're anything less than completely perfect, you will not get the throw. So yeah, really fun. Now, not to say there's no depth in this game besides just poking at each other. Uh, you know, there's some basic combos, you know, launch the enemy, hit him on the way down, that kind of stuff. But there's also Jedi master combos. So, you know, we saw Tekken 2, and man, those 10 hit strings are so cool, we gotta put it in our own game, right? So, well, they have stuff like this. And when you know it, that's a Jedi Master combo, right? And everyone's got silly long strings like this, and it causes those awful flashes every single time, even if you botch the string. And they're all elaborate here for Whore. And yes, his name is Whore. <laughs> his name's Whore. I'm sorry. It's a uh, circle, X, X, circle, triangle, X, triangle, circle, 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 right? So you got to master your little finger puzzles as they were and just go from there. So everyone's got their dumb Jedi master combo. Now to talk the single player experience. So yes, there is an arcade mode and there is a little bit of a story. So the story, this is set after A New Hope, and well, boy howdy, they're pretty rotten about that Death Star getting blown up, right? So the Emperor has sent out Arden Lin, the practitioner of Taras Kasi, to take out all those dirty rebels. So what is Taras Kasi? Well, it's just martial arts. It's space martial arts. There's nothing fancy to it. The idea is, at least in the old lore before Disney kind of wiped everything away, was a master of Taras Kasi, as it were, would be on the level, if not even beyond the average Jedi. A uh, person who is a master of the arts of Taras Kasi is a lethal weapon in and of themselves. So Arden Lin, she's a badass. You know what? Let's skip ahead here. Let's skip ahead. Let me show you if you win the game with Arden Lin, let's see your well-deserved arcade ending. Oh. Okay, yeah, that, that uh, really explains a lot about her and everything else is going on, right? So yeah, let's talk about the story mode. Um, there's not exactly a lot of single player content in this game. It's definitely not like uh, Tekken 3 or something where I had tons of single player content. But if the game's fun to play, that doesn't matter, right? So how about that AI? Well, that AI is uh, not at its best. Let's put it that way. Either it's infuriating and reads all your buttons and hits you before you can do anything, or it does some really stupid stuff on its own time. Let's have our big final epic battle with Darth Vader, right? And then, okay, so we're gonna do it. We're, gonna, we're duking it out. And then, oh, he just kind of flings himself off the edge. Game over. And uh, just like Arden Lin, all the endings are basically non-issues. They're a couple seconds long and they just cover the, the well-known stuff you already know. So there's not too much in the way of single player content here. Now, in fact, this is uh, the era back when, you know, you had unlockable characters. But the thing is, the unlockables aren't too smart. Like, 
One of the unlockable characters is Darth Vader. You figure he'd be playable right out of the gate, but no. And you can only unlock Darth Vader if you beat arcade mode with Luke. Considering, you know, in other times he shows up in fighting games, he's the main event. You figured you want to get the Darth Vader pretty quick, but no, they decided we'll have to make you unlock him first. But yeah, this game kind of sucked. Uh, just to stress for context here. So this came out October 31st, 1997. So we're well into the fighting game craze of the 90s, for sure. There's a million bad fighting games out there, but this one's still a bit below average. For comparison, both Virtual Fighter 3 and Tekken 3 are already out in arcades at this point. And Tekken 3 is actually out uh, for its PlayStation 1 console release a few months after this game launched. To say the least that on console, especially Tekken 3 was an absolute revelation is underselling it. Tekken 3 was the massive deal. And when you compare this game to Tekken 3, man, oh man, does an extra fall up short. So I'll leave you with one of the few things I like about this game. Like the game had the good sound effects. Like if you want your, uh, you know, Tusken Raider sound effects, you had them. The pig noises from the Gamorrean guards, all the music's in the game as well. Like, the presentation sound-wise was pretty good. And I'll say this as well. Thok, I did like Thok. I always thought the Gamorreans were kind of cool in the movie, and Thok's super is he grows huge. And I like when people get huge. And here I'm trying to do the throw. There we go. Because uh, he has a different throw when he's big. And the inputs are so bad in this game it's hard to do it on purpose <laughs> but yeah dude got big i like that and he had an axe that was cool but yeah overall if you've never heard of this game before today there's good reason because in the halcyon 90s fighting game catalog this one is near the bottom of the barrel and considering it has an absolute top tier license to boot makes it all the more shameful honestly so to close out well that's it for the video, so thank you very much for watching, hope this video has found you well, and do not go out and play the Masters of Taras Kasi.